For so many years, our ancestors wondered about the world around us. One of the questions they thought was, what lies deep beneath our feet? In this session, we will look at the anatomy of our planet. Specifically, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify and characterize the layers of the Earth, explain the mechanisms of the planet, and discuss the discovery of the Earth's layer. We were taught in school that the Earth is divided into three distinct layers, the crust, mantle, and the core. These layers were thought to be much alike as an egg. It was until a few millennia that our planet was described to be a spherical object drifting along the cosmos. Found under the thick atmosphere lies the crust. As the uppermost layer of the planet, it is a place where life exists as a part of the lithosphere and where the biosphere interacts with other subsystems. The crust may vary in thickness, from 5 kilometers to 70 kilometers thick. The continental crust is about 30% of the Earth's surface. This type of crust is made up of dense granitic rock. Its thickness varies from 40 kilometers to 70 kilometers thick, where most of the continents and terrestrial life thrives in this area. While most of the Earth's crust is submerged in the seafloor, most of it are classified as oceanic crust. Oceanic crust is made up of basaltic rocks, which are denser than granitic rocks of continental crust. The difference in density is caused by the immense pressure the lava was subjected to as it cooled and hardened to become a basaltic rock. Basaltic rocks compared to granitic rocks are exposed to the cold depths of the ocean, bringing its thickness to 5 kilometers in average. The crust is made up of alumina and silica where continental crust contains less alumina but high in silica, while on the other hand, the oceanic crust contains the opposite. Deeper than the crust is where the semi-solid layer is found. The crust and the mantle are separated by the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere is a rubbery material which holds and separates the solid crust from sinking towards the hot, semi-solid mantle. The mantle is the thickest layer at about 2,900 kilometers thick. This makes up 80% of the Earth and holds most of the planet's mass. It is also where convection happens. Convection is a process where hot magma from the lower mantle rises to cool down in the upper mantle, and warm magma from the upper mantle heats up as it sinks towards the lower mantle. Because of this, the temperature of the mantle has significant variations. The upper mantle can be as low as 900 degrees Celsius while the lower mantle is as high as 1000 to 3700 degrees Celsius. However, both sides are still composed of ferromagnesium silicate rocks. The mechanisms of the mantle has a direct impact in the upper layers of the earth, where the energy from convection get transferred to the stenosphere which causes plate movements observed or felt as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, or formation of land masses in the lithosphere. At the same time, it is also hypothesized that the frequent movement of materials in the mantle and the core itself, caused by convection and other forces, has a direct relationship with the presence of a strong magnetic field of a planet, hence the existence of an atmosphere. Below the mantle is where the core exists. The core can be classified as inner core and outer core. The former is liquid while the latter is solid. The outer core is 2,270 kilometers in thickness. It is also the only layer of the earth that is liquid. Made up of molten iron and nickel, its phase of matter is caused by high pressure and heat at about 3,700 to 4,300 degrees Celsius, as influenced by the inner core that is at least 6,000 degrees Celsius in temperature. And due to the extreme pressure, it is solid and is made up of iron that is 1,220 kilometers in diameter. How do we know this? It is all because of the efforts of many people and their contributions to this knowledge. During an earthquake, data are recorded all over the surface of the earth. Seismic waves travel deep underground. Body waves travel through inner layers of the earth, while surface waves travel on the surface of the planet. There are two types of body waves, 
P wave and S wave. P waves travel the fastest at 1.5 km to 8 km per second, but P wave has the weakest energy, while S wave travels slower but with strength. Although S wave or secondary wave is stronger, S wave can only travel in solid, while P wave or primary wave travels in both solid and liquid phases of matter. Surface waves, on the other hand, can be an L wave or R wave. L wave or love wave is felt once body waves have already passed. An R wave or Rayleigh wave come the slowest, but it is the most destructive type of wave felt during an earthquake. Edmund Haley once theorized that the planet is hollow and that the crust just drifts above an enormous ball of gas underneath. But because of seismological data, we then confirm that the planet is made up of many things. Remember that seismic waves come in two forms, and under body waves, P e wave and S wave travel in different speed and at different phases of matter. These are detected by seismometers and recorded by seismographs. Based on this knowledge, Andrea Mohorovicic concluded that the crust is less dense as compared to the mantle. As P wave travels deep underground, data show that it bends due to the change in velocity at what is now called the Mohorovicic discontinuity. Mohorovicic is the interface between the crust and the mantle. Based on the knowledge that the S wave cannot penetrate through fluids, it was concluded that the outer core is liquid. P wave also had a significant bending in this layer, which means that P wave travels slower than how it traveled through mantle as it passes through this layer. The interface between mantle and the liquid outer core is called the Gatenberg discontinuity. Finally, found below it, the inner core is separated by the Lehmann discontinuity. In conclusion, seismic wave paved the foundation for mapping the internal structure of the Earth. Though none of us in this generation have the technological capacity to physically travel deep beneath the Earth, we have a strong theory that is scientifically supported that the planet is made up of layers similar to a boiled egg. That's all the time we have for this session. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next one.